gives us the efficiency of the intercooled cycle. Let's look now at the efficiency of the comparable uh, simple uh, Braden cycle. Uh, let's go back to the um, just remind ourselves what our what we're analysing here. Our simple Brayton cycle goes from one, two prime, five to six. Uh, so some things are the same. The uh, turbine process is exactly the same in the integral and simple cycles. The heat addition process is different though, and the compression process is different. So we need to uh, modify it a bit. Okay, but uh, straight away we can fill in on this table the uh, turbine. Uh, work. It's exactly the same. Compressor process in the simple cycle. Uh, 1w2, first law here, cp21 minus t2, t2, same procedure as before, pretty much. Uh, the power of um, gamma minus 1 over gamma. Uh, the pressure ratio is 10 this time. So we have 10 and that gives us a compressor work of two eighty point six kilojoules per kilogram minus 280.6 for being strict with the signs. Um, the, uh, sorry, that's all of these twos are two primes now. This, this state two is not the same as state two for the intercooled cycle. Okay. Uh, our compressor, our combustion process goes from two prime to five Same T5 as before. Okay, that is probably all we need. 280.6 and 63.9. So for the simple cycle, the net work that the engine gives us is 581.4 minus 300.8 kilojoules per kilogram. That's how much energy we get for every kilogram of air that goes through the engine. Our thermal efficiency then is 0.482. So what this analysis tells us is that we get a higher thermal efficiency from the simple Brayton cycle than we get from the intercooled Brayton cycle. Why is that? Well, let's see how things change when we go from simple cycle to intercooled. So, in the simple cycle, we need 280.6 kilojoules to compress one kilogram of air by a pressure ratio of 10. In intercooled, it's only 235, so the compressor work goes down with intercooling. And that is the whole rationale for intercooling, so that's confirmed, at least that makes sense. Uh, but the gas is colder when it comes out of the uh, compressor. Uh, in the simple cycle, it comes out of the compressor at 579 Kelvin. In the intercooled, it comes out at 423 Kelvin. So the gas is cooler, so we need to add more heat and combustion to get it up to our desired turbine inlet temperature. So that uh, combustion heat transfer is up and it's up by quite a lot. 
uh, we get the same uh, power out of the turbine, or the same work out of the turbine in both cases. Um, so the increased heat input that we need outweighs the reduced compressor work that we need and our efficiency goes down. Efficiency is probably the most important um, performance measure for any heat engine but the work output is important as well. How much work do we get per kilogram of working fluid that we process? And that's this, this number here, the network output. Uh, so that is going up a little bit with intercooling uh, because the reason for that is that uh, less of our turbine output is being fed back into the compressor. So that goes up a little bit, which is, is something of, a, of an advantage, but overall the uh, thermal efficiency is down. Yes, that intercooling is a bad thing for efficiency. So we need to take a closer look at it, or look at it in a different way maybe. Uh, one other note on this, uh, on the analysis of the simple uh, Brayton cycle, if we were smart we could have bypassed some of this calculation to find the thermal efficiency. Uh, because the, there's a well-known formula for the thermal efficiency of a Brayton cycle, of course. Um, here it is. Uh, so the efficiency depends only on the overall pressure ratio and the specific heat ratio. So let's just uh, quickly check that. Uh, it's 1 minus 1 over. The pressure ratio is 10. And it gives us... Uh, 0.482, which is consistent with uh, what we calculated out from first principles. So this analysis shows us, to recap, shows us that an intercooled Brayton cycle uh, is actually less efficient than a simple Brayton cycle.